In this video, we are going to create a search function based on the data that you see in this database using the Entity Framework. In a previous video, we created the uh, data that you see here. We made an import statement. And we've also constructed some controllers. So let's go look at our gadgets controller and we'll continue working here. So we've also set up this access to something called the application DB context. So if you don't have that yet, we need to put that in there. I put in a constructor and a disposer, you might call it. And those are kind of initial setups. Now, the index page is where we're going to start. In a previous version of our application, we created a data access object. And you can see that there's no folder over here called DAO. We're going to avoid that altogether. Instead, we're going to use this method called the context, and we're going to get the data directly from the database using this entity framework. So what I want to do is in the index file or index view, I want to send it a list and the list, we're going to call it gadgets. So gadgets needs to be filled. We need to uh, populate it with a list from the database. So here's how that works. So the first thing I need to do is define the word gadgets or the variable gadgets. So it's going to be a list and it's of type gadget. Then what I want to do is assign it values. So all I have to do now is type in the word context dot and you can see that one of the items in this uh, extension is the word gadgets. And then after I've assigned it to gadgets, I need to say, hey, this is not just a, a database return list. It's actually a to list command. So I have to convert it. Now, where did it know that this context has gadgets associated with it? Well, that came from a previous configuration we made here in identity models. So you can see on line 24, because I gave this a property called gadgets here, it showed up in my uh, context. So if I were to rename this, it's called this gadgets list. And uh, let's go back and see what it does now in the controller. Obviously, this is going to have to change. So we type in gadgets list. So you can use gadgets or gadgets list. So typically, uh, gadgets would be the proper way to do it. But just make sure that this is known to you. This is a user-defined uh, uh, field. You can name it anything you want. And you just have to remember what it's called. So let's go back to gadgets. Now, this is so simple. Are we done? It should be. We have an index view that is expecting a list. And that was created in a previous tutorial. So let's run it and see how it works. All right, the application's up and running. Uh, we no longer have the uh, links in the nav bar. So maybe we should fix that. But we can at least get to the gadgets uh, controller here. So gadgets and press enter. And this will bring up the index page, which we just programmed. And there it is. So without any SQL statements written at all, we have gotten ourselves access to the entire list of gadgets from our database. So not, not too hard, huh? Okay, I'm gonna close the application. Since I have the other uh, nav bar in a previous project, I'm going to go back and search for the views and shared and uh, there it is, layout. So I'm going to copy layout and then put it into my shared folder over here. So that way I get my nav bar. Okay, I'm going to replace it. And let's just test and see if that actually helps now. Okay, good. So now I can see that I have new links. And if I choose show gadgets, it should bring me to the same page that I was just a minute ago. Yes, we are at the gadgets controller. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to have to do is go and choose the search form because right now if I try to try search anything, it'll probably break because it's not programmed yet. But that's coming up in just a minute. 